in this lab, we have our breadboard. We also have an input DPI switch. We will have an output LED bar. We are going to have two wires that are going to connect them, the specific switch to the LED. And then we have these two resistors right here. One is a pull down SIP resistor and the other one is an LED current limiting resistor. We also have these smaller wires, which will help us connect the endings. We have a power supply. We have a cable to connect our power supply to this power part, and that will go into our breadboard. That is what this part looks like. So to start this off, we can see that we have a negative and a positive here for both of these sides, a negative and a positive. We have a negative and positive here. We're gonna line these up with the lines on our breadboard. So negative positive is going to go on this side where we have a negative positive. And then we can see that it's going to line up on this side as well. We have these four pins on the bottom and we're just going to plug it in. Once it's pushed in and set in there, we can start building the rest of our diagram. So first we are going to want some power coming out of the power rails because these two sides are our power rails into the actual middle part of our breadboard. So to do this, we are going to take this small part and we are going to place it and we're putting it in the negative power rail and we're putting it in the first part of the breadboard. Exactly where, it doesn't really matter. You just wanna have some space to this side. So after this, we are going to have our one kilo ohm resistor. Now it's going to be either this or this. On the top of these, there is a small number right here this one says 102. Depending on what this value is, will tell you how much resistance this is. So 102, the code for this, if you look it up online, is a one kilo ohm resistor. For this other one, we have a 331, and this is gonna give us a 330 ohm resistor. So this is 330, and this is one kilo ohm. Now for here, what we want to put is our one kilo ohm resistor, and it's going to be in the same column, these pins, so we're going to line it up like this. Once that's set in, we can put our input DIP switch. Now just to make sure that our switch is going to be plugged in correctly and get the resistance, we're not gonna plug it into the very first row where it's at. We're going to look at the next one and plug it in here. So there should be a single column right above it where the resistor is connected. And that way our DP switch is in here from this, we are going to place our two wires. Now we want to connect one of the switches to where our LED output will be. So we are going to have our switch one connected like this. This is gonna go right underneath the one for our switch. And then it's going to terminate somewhere along here. Next, we are going to get this wire and we're going to do the same. We're gonna put it underneath the two. And now this is going to terminate next to it. And so when we plug in our LED output bar, we can see where it's gonna go. We want one current flowing through this first LED and another one flowing through this next LED. Also, this is keyed, so it can only go in one way. If you put it in this way, it won't work. If you put it in this way, where the numbers are showing, and if everything else is set up like this, we can plug it in like this. Again, with the numbers facing forward. So we're gonna have our first prong be with the first wire where it terminates in the same column. So we are just going to push this in here. Now that that's set, we could finish this up. This is only getting negative, so we don't have a complete circuit here. We need positive going in here, so we are going to take these small wires and we're going to connect them in here. Now we're not going to connect them in the same row as this first one. We're not going to connect it like this. We are going to connect it where our first green wire is in. So we're connecting it into the same column as this. And then we're going to do that with the second one as well. And this is to correspond with the second green wire. We can see it's in the next column. Now from here, we need some resistance to flow out of this because we don't want so much current in here. So we're going to take this wire and we're going to plug it in here. And then we want to go across our board. So we're going to take this wire and we can plug it in right in front of our LED bar. And then we could take our last resistor. This is the 331 or the 330 ohms of resistance. And then we are just going to plug it in right here, making sure that these are all lined up. Once we do that, 
we can grab our power cable, we can grab our power supply, we can plug these in, and then we can plug these in here. I'm going to then turn on this power supply because you have to do that for this one. Once this is on, we can hit this white switch. We can see that this green LED turns on and now this is power. So we can start flipping the switches. We're gonna flip in one. We can see that the first LED bar lights up. Now we'll flip two and we can see that that one lights up. If we flip, let's say eight, nothing happens because there's nothing connected to eight. If we flip off one, then it's going to turn off one. Also make sure everything's secured properly. You don't wanna kill anything. So after some testing where we flip on the LEDs and flip them off, we can see that this works perfectly. And the reason why I turned this off is because you don't wanna have any current flowing through here when you're unplugging things because you could either electrocute yourself or break one of the components and kill it. For the second part of this lab, we are going to use multi-SIM and we're going to launch a remote desktop to connect to it. This is what our desktop looks like. We can go in here and search up multi-SIM and we're going to get NI multi-SIM 14.2. We're just going to open this and then it is going to take us here. Now we are going to want to retrieve the file that was given to us. We are going to grab this multi-SIM file. We are going to then open said file and it's going to open in our multi-SIM. So this is what it's going to look like. To run our configuration, we have to press this green play button up here or F5. We can pause it or we can also stop it. But this is what our configuration is going to look like. We can see that if we hit switch eight, we got a simulation error. And that's because it didn't work correctly. So I'm going to flip that back off, run it again. And we have a switch one, our LED one light comes on. And then if we hit switch two, the second LED light comes on. And then we'll turn off one and then two works and the same for both of them. So that is how we would demonstrate this in a simulation environment. For the lab report, we are going to write for three, four, and five together. This is design and simulate circuits using NI Multisim and our breadboard. So we're going to list our lab three objectives. We're gonna list the title. We are also going to list our preparations and challenges, describe it a little bit. We're not gonna have any lab results for this, nor are we going to write a conclusion yet. 